votes. And now the chairman of the Democratic National Committee, Tim Kaine, says Minnesota's governor should hurry up and certify this race already. Here's Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty. Governor Pawlenty, good to see you today. Hey, Contessa, good to see you. I saw the letter that Tim Kaine wrote to you. I understand that um, you have denied his request to get involved. Why? Well, I think there's some confusion on his part. Under Minnesota law, Contessa, I cannot, cannot issue an election certificate until the state court process is complete. Our statutes say that. The Minnesota Supreme Court said that in a previous case. So I think he's under the mistaken impression that I'm able to do something, but I cannot until the court process is completed. What he says is um, then if you are unable to get involved and to hurry up the process along, he says, I urge you to commit to signing an election certificate for the rightful winner as soon as the court issues a ruling in, in the case. Will you do that? Well, I certainly intend to follow any direction from the court in that regard. But if they remand the case, for example, to the lower court to open up more ballots or count more ballots, they would then say the state court process isn't complete yet. And again, that law that I cited earlier would kick in. So I appreciate Governor Kane. He's my friend and colleague. But I don't think he understands Minnesota law as he makes those demands. But what you're saying is if the Minnesota Supreme Court makes a decision about who was the rightful uh, winner of the election in November, you will certify those results. I'm going to follow the direction of the court uh, in any uh, direction they give as to the certification. That's for sure. I will follow the law in the direction of the court. Let me play what Al Franken, who, by the way, it's his birthday today. I think he's turning 58 years old. Let me play what he said yesterday about this process. In fact, by my math, we're only one seat away from having enough Democratic senators to overcome Republican roadblocks and make real progress on President Obama's agenda. And that seat has my name on it. What do, you, what do you say to critics then who suggest that you're obstructing the process uh, simply to keep a Democrat out of the Senate for as long as possible? Well, I think, Contessa, they're just not informed. Again, I cannot. Minnesota law prohibits me from signing that certificate until at least the state court process is complete. So with all due respect to those critics, yeah. I just don't think they're informed and they're saying things that are contrary to law. Let me move on. I know that you've been in a very tense budget battle with your uh, state lawmakers. And um, at this point, you're looking at a, what, $2.7 billion budget gap? Yeah, and I, you're out the first part of the question, but if it relates to the state budget, yes, our, our state legislature was in session for five months. They sent bills that uh, spend more than we have in revenues, and so now that has to be adjusted, and they've gone for the year, and we have a process in Minnesota that uh, seems to be uh, ready for use, and that is called unallotment, which means I can shave the spending down uh, without them, and that's what I intend to and do. And how do you do that? You unilaterally decide uh, what programs you'll cut? Uh, essentially, if, if the uh, law says that if the revenues are lower than the need and the expenditures, uh, then the governor has the power to trim down the spending levels, and that's exactly right, Contessa. Wow. And Minnesota, Minnesotans are sick of the, the impasse on this, and so somebody has to break the logjam, and that's my duty. I bet you there are a lot of other governors who wish they had that kind of power in their states to do the same thing, because a lot of budget gaps nationwide. One more question for you. The big story that we've been talking about today, Governor Pawlenty, is um, these back-to-back uh, -back, uh, speeches that were given on national security by President Obama and former Vice President Dick Cheney. Do you think Dick Cheney is the right person to be speaking to the nation, to be opposing the president at this time? Do you find him to be a credible spokesperson? Well, I think he is a credible spokesperson on these issues, and I think it frames the issues well to have those back-to-back -back speeches with two perspectives. I think it's a great service to the debate and to the country to have two thoughtful leaders expressing their views on it so your viewers and others can benefit from that and make their own judgments and decisions. So I don't think it's fair to say former Vice President Cheney somehow is uh, nothing he says is worthy of listening to. I think he's a, got a lot of experience and a lot of insight into these issues, and he's a worthy voice to be heard. So when he says uh, that water boarding helped keep Americans safer, that it worked. Do you think that helps the GOP? Well, I think he has probably some inside information about who was waterboarded and what information was derived from that and what events it prevented. It's hard for me or anyone else to judge that unless you know the specifics. But what we do know is during the 911, the country wasn't attacked, didn't have another terrorist incident, so they must have done something right. So, so you think that if uh, waterboarding worked, then it probably is a good thing to go forward? Well, I think you asked the quite great question earlier when one of your earlier guests is how far do you go? I think clearly we have to weigh the benefits of that information against the uh, 
damage it causes not only to the individual but to our values more broadly. I think you framed the debate very well earlier, Contessa, and there's obviously two conflicting views of it. Governor Pawlenty, thanks for the compliment. I appreciate your time today. All right. All right. You're welcome. President Obama and, and former Vice President Dick Cheney aren't the only ones going to toe-to-toe -to -toe over national security today. Coming up, you're going to hear what Cheney's daughter, Liz, and Obama's senior advisor, David Axelrod, are saying next on MSNBC.